So today we're going to work on a very rudimentary radar system. And I know that in the bulk of the Star Fox game, there isn't actually a radar system like this. It's only when you're in the all range mode that you actually use radar. But since there aren't very many tutorials about how to use viewports in Godot, I thought this might be a, a welcomed tutorial. So we'll go ahead and look at the node structure first, and then we'll get into the code. So just an immediate look at what was going on here. We're going to be adding meshes to each enemy and the player that the camera in the dolly that follows the player isn't actually going to see. It's going to ignore all of these shapes. You didn't see any of these ridiculous shapes in the opening clip. We're going to add an additional camera that follows along the dolly from the above position looking down. So this is the camera that is following the player that you see in the main part of the game. And this is where the camera is going to be for the radar. Now, uh, it doesn't really matter where you put the camera itself because we're going to be aligning it with this position 3D. So it's actually very important where you put this radar position. So I have it just a little bit farther ahead, it's about 65 ahead of the ship, and 150 above the dolly also. And like I said, this is part of the dolly system, is where that position 3D is going to be. So to actually make the position 3D that I was talking about follow the dolly, I use this align radar function that is simply, I bring the camera global origin along with the radar position. So I find that node that is my radar position where I actually want it to be, and I put the radar camera to that spot. And so where we are going to put that camera is in the HUD. So if we look at our HUD, we actually have the sites that we were worked on last time. And we're going to add a viewport container. Now we'll look at the 2D part of this. We're looking at this part specifically. We're going to use a control node, the green ones, and put a viewport container. And the reason for that is it's a container specifically meant for the viewports that we're going to be adding. Since it's a control node, we'll be able to easily mix and match it with other control nodes that we're going to add eventually. We'll have a health bar, your score, uh, probably your amount of boost that you have left, and a box here for your teammates to talk to you and have Slippy tell you that you're shooting him. Like I said, we're going to take this viewport container, and I actually went to the layout, and I anchored it to the bottom right, so it's anchored to this bottom corner. The size of it is the position, like I said, will set itself because you're going to anchor it, but I set the size to about 175 for both, made this nice little square. And then the viewport is 150 squared. Viewports seem kind of tricky, but they're actually not as difficult as they first appear. It's just that there aren't very many tutorials about it. So basically each viewport has to have a camera or something feeding it information to project into this viewport. This is basically a little TV screen that's going to show something other than what is going on in the game. It's going to be showing the map from above. Now I just quickly took the Godot icon and put it in here. I changed its uh, modulate to something very dark. And then I brought its alpha down. If I bring this back up, you can see that it's actually just the Godot icon. So like I said, just make it pretty dark. Obviously, we could use a different sprite. I just thought this was easiest for my example. So the camera works in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect right away. The simplest way to have a viewport is to have a camera as a child. But the viewport container and the viewport, I mean, we're kind of working in 2D here, but you can put this 3D camera right wherever you want it, and it will still work with the viewport. Now, what makes this special 
that it doesn't just show the map is this thing called the coal mask. And the coal mask is really what makes all of this work. This camera is not going to see anything in this first box. So you can just like how you do physics layers or layers inside of the project settings, you can go into the 3D render and label them so you know what's going on. Uh, like I said, this is pretty much everything, and then this layer is just the things that we need for the radar. When we go to our individual mesh nodes, we can look at the visual instance and see what layer it is in. So the ship is part of the world, and this radar mesh is part of the radar layer. So the camera that is following the ship will only see the ship, and it will not see this ridiculous ball underneath. And the camera from the top will not see the ship, but it will see this ridiculous ball. Now, this ball is just a simple mesh. I made a sphere. Spheres are just the easiest to work with, uh, with how much movement that my ship has. Basically, I don't want it to rotate awkwardly and make different shapes based on how the ship is rotated. So this circle is going to rotate with the ship since my input is rotating my kinematic body. I don't want awkward shapes to happen on the radar just because my ship is rotating, and you kind of avoid that with the, the sphere. Now my stationary enemies, I just used a plane and made it a square. That way you could see a difference between the stationary enemies and the enemies that were moving. I went ahead and I put this in every single enemy, put a mesh that was just a sphere or a plane, whichever I chose. Just make the ball big enough to see. Like I said, it's okay that it looks ridiculous because you're not actually going to see it except from the radar camera. And another thing I don't want to forget is I actually turned on the transparent. Otherwise, you won't be able to see through it like I had in the example. So I just wanted to have that semi-clear background that was the Godot icon. So I had to actually make the the actual viewport transparent. And then a little tip to make the radar icons pop a little bit more is so you go into here and you have to make sure that you have a sky. Uh, that way you have ambient light in the map and bring up the energy. This is really, really bright. 10 is actually really, really bright, but it makes the little icons in the corner pop a, a lot better than when it's just dark. And remember that this is just the sky and the energy level for the radar camera, and it doesn't actually affect our real world that we're looking at when we play the game. Now, I also lock the mesh to the ground, or to zero, zero, Basically, I allow it to move left and right and forward and back. But if I don't have this line, if you watch the player, the the circle will change sizes because it's getting closer and farther away from the camera. And that looks really confusing. And you can actually use that if, if that's what you actually want from your radar. That's That can be cool, but that's not what I want right now. I don't want the yellow dot to get really big the higher I go. So I lock the radar to the Y, so the up and down, just to zero. And like I said, that's the global transform of the mesh. And I have to have this line of code in every single enemy or anything that I'm using that's actually going to be in the radar. So I set all of them to have this line where you set the mesh way at just at the same level. That, that's really the important thing. It doesn't really have to be zero zero, but I just thought zero zero was the clearest. Um, so you find that radar mesh, that's all that you have to use a reference to it, and but since we're going to be calling it a lot, I made it into a variable. So what you end up with is a nice little radar that has different colors and different shapes for different types of enemies and for the player. And obviously you can build upon this quite a bit uh, and have 
a lot of different variables into this type of radar, but this is just a basic intro to it, and we'll expand on it more. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.